my fellow fellow note owners. I have heard your cries, your torment, and your anguish at trying to install the brand new nodes for Gala version 3.1.2. So uh, I'm here to help you uh, install it on Windows. So this is uh, for Windows on your home PC. Uh, I personally thought the VPS was uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, this was a little more difficult, mostly because of the very first uh, uh, step that we're going to have to go into. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it, okay? So uh, first things first, uh, go to node.gala.com, put in all your login stuff and all that fun stuff, and your node should, nodes should come up. Uh, as you can see, you got uh, two films, one founder, one, two music, two spider tanks. You can see your nodes listed here. So uh, I have WikiPC, which is the one that I've uninstalled so that I can, uh, I had to reinstall it anyways because we want that 3.1.2. That is what you want. So if you're not on that, you're going to have to uninstall and reinstall the uh, Gala node software, just the Gala node software. If you've done anything else, you should be good and it should be pretty easy to flip over. Uh, and then I have my stupid Vulture, which was just a temporary thing while I was kind of messing with stuff. Uh, the other day so uh, we're going to work on wiki pc so anyways at this site you just go ahead and go down to the download okay you're on windows here's your mac and linux linux uh so windows you're going to go down to install the gala node software v3 on windows okay this is what the guys have put together to walk you through and it's pretty good so description assumptions made and your procedure so um there's your link we'll just take you right back to the gala node there so CPU virtualization, this is probably the uh, biggest issue and hang up for a lot of people. So I would say um, to do this first uh, before you do anything else and that's how they do have it listed. So uh, I have some screenshots here. So of some different ones. So first one right here is uh, old uh, MSI uh, click BIOS. So your BIOS, when you restart your computer and starting to load up, it's either going to be F2 or the delete key. Uh, every motherboard is a little different, but if you want, I guess you could just go F2 delete, F2 delete, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, until you know you're just so crazy that you go. <laughs> but it'll uh, should pop up if it goes into Windows. You just got to restart and do it again. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you on that screen just for a brief second what to click. So once you're in your BIOS, uh, it'll look something like this. This is pretty old, but uh, for like the MSI click BIOS, for instance. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go to overclocking. You're gonna go down to CPU features. And the specific thing you're looking for in all these BIOS is something that either says like this Intel virtualization tech, Intel VTD tech. And you're gonna go ahead and wanna switch that from disabled to enabled. There's a few computers that have this automatically enabled, but most of the ones I've seen have been disabled. The other thing that's very, very common, which will go into the gigabyte here. So here's the gigabyte motherboard. Um, first, sometimes you'll go into the easy mode. If you are, you want to go into the advanced mode. This is in pretty much any BIOS. So go ahead and go to advanced mode. In the advanced mode for the Gigabyte motherboard here, uh, I went to the advanced CPU settings. And that takes me right into here. And boom, there it is, SVM mode. And it was disabled. So I went ahead and switched that to enabled. And then saved and exit. Here's another Gigabyte board. Um, this one was a little different. This one was a little more annoying because you clicked advanced CPU settings and it takes you into here and there's no SVM there. So you're like, where is my SVM and my virtualization stuff? Go to settings, go to miscellaneous, and then here's your VT-D. And you go ahead and click that from enabled. Tried to show an Asus one. The Asus one was pretty straightforward. The SVM was right there uh, in the BIOS too, pretty easy to find. But those are the keywords you're looking for. They need to be enabled. That is probably the biggest hangup that's uh, affecting most people. So uh, from there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go back. So the next setup is gonna be Docker. So if you're following this uh, little system here, you can go ahead and just click the little hyperlink they have in here, pretty easy. Docker desktop for Windows. Keep, gonna click that. So that's gonna open up for us uh, once it's done downloading. While it's doing that, you can go ahead and click back on here. So it'll take you back to your support guide. Scroll down a little bit, scroll down a little bit, scroll down. Okay, it's saying, hey, you want to let Docker install? Yes, we do. Installing Docker desktop is popping up over here on the side. Let me bring it into the window. Add shortcut to desktop. Yeah, of course. So once this is kind of downloading, gets up, 
the Linux kernel installation is going to be the next thing. Some of the newer computers, if you try to do this first, it'll say, uh, oh, there's no need for it. Or it'll like, it'll give you some weird error where it's telling you you don't need it. So that's fine. Just download the Docker first. Once Docker gets downloaded and um, it tries to like process and everything, if you do not have Linux downloaded, it'll give you an error and it'll say like you need Linux or something. That's fine. You can just leave it on that window and you're just going to click the next navigate to the Linux button. Boom, there it is, WSL2 Linux. Click it. It's gonna download like this and update. Pop it up. Yeah, we're downloading two things at once because we are cooking. Go ahead and click Finish, and that's it. So mine said Finish because I already have done this and I don't know how to uninstall it for you guys so you can see it, but it's literally just a next, 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 and then you're done. Super fast. Um, once again, if you want to just wait you can wait till your docker downloads because once docker is done downloading and it tries to load up if this is not done especially on your new computers when your new computers you try to download download it like we did there and it'll like give you some weird message uh basically not having you to download it or install it just let docker download once docker's in you have a, a linux system on your computer and at that point is when you are um it are going to be able to finally go to that link and download it. It's been different on every computer, so I understand why a lot of founder nodes have been a little uh, frustrated. <laughs> frustrated with everything. So I'm going to close that out. After you get the Linux all installed, big thing, make sure you check mark both of these whenever uh, the Windows firewall does pop up. So Gala node installation is going to be your next, next thing to do. So we go back to Gala node. Before you click the download, I would go ahead and just make an API key or you can do it after the fact, but click API key, click generate IP API key, type in whatever you want to name it. You can see the names for mine, whatever. Um, and then you're going to go back to download, click download. Obviously it opens right back up. 3.1.2 is the one we're looking for. Go ahead and open up the wizard next. Set terms, next, next, install. Yes. And finish. So we're going to let it launch. So it'll launch in the bottom right here. It's also going to tell you, hey, you got to enter a, uh, get an API key or enter now. We're going to click enter now because we have already made ours. So mine's going to be this uh, Brace FN1 which I know is my Wookiee PC, paste it in there, click OK. API key added. It is now happy. Click OK, and that should be it. So let's close this window down. We are going to go ahead and open up Docker. So I'm gonna double click down Docker. Oh yeah, the other thing you need to do on my other window here, in your little tool toolbar down there on the bottom right, you're going to click up, you're going to find your Gala node, right click it, go to select workloads. You have to do this. If you do not do this part, it is not going to function. So you're going to want to click every single one or whichever ones you have. So I have all three on this. So select workloads, make sure they're all selected. These have to be selected. If they are not selected, it ain't going to work. So as we open up Docker here, you go ahead and click accept. You can just skip the tutorial. You don't need that. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, restart the computer, open this back up. Once this opens up, it should be good. <laughs> All right, we're back. Just restarted uh, my computer. Let's go ahead and uh, try to open up Docker here. Okay, Docker starting up here. The Gala Founders node automatically opens with uh, Windows uh, when it turns on. So I double checked, all the workloads are still checked. Everything looks good. And it's like maybe we're running into an issue. Oh, no, there we go. All right, it kicked in, perfect. Maybe we just needed that, uh, that restart. Perfect, I love that this showed up. This is super easy. If it says an error occurred, it just means it's being weird. Click the settings button, click X, you're back. Boom, how fix, how cool, boom, just, oh man, I just can't get over how easy of a fix that is just because nothing is ever easy in my life. So 
now we are uh, good to go. We're all squared away. Docker's running. This is up. It's showing everything's running. The last thing uh, to make note of is on your Gala Node web page, um, it's going to take like 15 to 30 minutes before it shows all green uh, across the board. So uh, I'm going to show that to you once once we got it going here. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been exactly three minutes, and it looks like my node finally popped up here. So let's go ahead and rename this. And then uh, I'm just going to rename this one as uh, bold. So perfect. So it shows, uh, it popped up here. So it's now reading that it is a alive. It'll probably take a while longer. People have said like 15 to 30 minutes before you start finally seeing it uh, populate how much time is on here and that these finally go green, okay? But like I said, if everything's showing, if your Docker's showing everything running, on the bottom right, you got your uh, workloads all running, you're good to go, okay? Uh, but as always, I always like to double check too. So come back in like 30 minutes, make sure it's all green, everything looks good. Um, I do know that the email system is still working. So I've had some of these nodes uh, go down for whatever various reasons, and I'm still getting the emails um, for these upgraded versions when a node does go down. So that's a big plus. And then I can go ahead and uh, kill my uh, Vulture thing so I don't use a bunch of money. I know Vulture is uh, more expensive than other ones, but it's what I'm familiar with. I'm not a big IT guy, okay? And as always, stay warm, Wookiees. And if you enjoyed this video or you thought it was helpful, go ahead and give that a big uh, thumbs up. Appreciate it. And we will uh, catch you in hopefully a more entertaining video. This one was a little more uh, boring how-to. All right, take care, everyone.